Hi, I'm Sean Cole for Inside Sim Racing. Thanks for joining today's show. I remember when NASCAR 2003 hit the shelves. At first sight, the sim was a little rough around the edges, but with a patch and a little support, it went on to be one of the best sims of all time. Papyrus, the company behind that sim, had also made Grand Prix Legends, also arguably one of the best sims ever made. And then Papyrus just disappeared. Many years later, under the leadership of Dave Kamer, iRacing was formed. iRacing would then start building its first sim. What very few people realized at the time is that iRacing wasn't just making a sim, but creating an entire world for sim racers. This environment will do its best to mimic the racing and ladder systems that you would find trying to climb the ranks in real world racing. We will discuss this much more in detail later, but for now let's move on to the sim. We have been testing and are now showing what is being referred to as the beta version of the sim. Some features may change and others may be added prior to the release. When one begins with iRacing, it will be immediately noticeable that this sim is different than all others. You will be asked what kind of subscription that you would like to purchase. One month, three month, six month, and one year subscriptions are all available. That's right folks, like many things in life we are looking at monthly charges, but this time for your sim. Each link offering a larger break on the monthly pricing. Regardless of how long you subscribe for the basic membership, it will give you the same content. This would be a Legends car, along with four different ovals to drive on. In addition, you will get the Pontiac Solstice and four different road courses to drive. This may sound like a small amount, but you will see why later. After purchasing the subscription of choice, you will then move on to downloading the software. iRacing will then automatically check your graphical settings, then it goes right into one of the easiest control setup menus that I have ever used and a moment later you are within the iRacing software and ready to drive. It was that easy. Now that everything is installed and ready to go, we enter the iRacing homepage. The sim is completely run within an internet interface using your web browser. At first look, it will be totally different and it look confusing, but after taking a little bit of time, it is actually a very easy to use interface with many layers of information. In this menu, you can go to the home page, you can look at news, or you can go to the instructions page. In the instructions tab, you will find a quick start guide, a user guide, as well as the sporting code or rule book. Other tabs include series. This is the tab where you can choose the series that you want to participate in at that moment. You will also need to have the appropriate license to match the series you would like to join. The next tab is cars. Here you can select any of the cars that you own, learn about them, or select them for a practice session. Following cars is the tracks tab. And much like the one before, you can select any of the tracks that you own and learn about them or go out for a practice session on them. The next tab is very important, and this is the My Racing tab. Here is where you can paint your cars, your suit, your helmet, as well as look up drivers that you know or are keeping an eye on. The next tab is Stats. If you want to check race results or best lap times, this is where you want to look. This is also where you will have a record of every session that you have ever run. In addition, there is a career tab showing you all of the stats since you joined iRacing. Very, very cool data tracking. The next three tabs are pretty self-explanatory. You have a forum where you will find an endless amount of information about the sim from users like yourself. The chat tab is exactly what it says, a place for people to gather and talk when not racing. And then there's the iRacing store tab. The next tab is the black one and it's labeled test. And if you want a quick way to select a car or track and take it for a solo run, you can do it here. Then followed by the most important tab of all, race. And like it says, this is where you will be joining races for points and truly starting your career as an iRacing racer. Now let's get down to some fun. When we purchased our basic membership, we were given a road car and an oval car. First choice now is what type of racing do we want to do? I'm going to go ahead and start off in a test mode with the Legends 34 Coupe and the four ovals we have to choose from are Lanier, Oxford Pass, South Boston, or Lowe's. Since iRacing is located in Boston, let's start off there at the South Boston track. After a brief loading, we are now sitting on pit lane with the view looking at our pit stall. Right now is when you will get your first taste of iRacing's graphics, but to truly see them, I will click on the test button and go out for some laps. Here we are in pit lane. You can see the warning telling me what the pit lane speed is. I rev it up a little and roll her out. The view out of this little baby Legends is tight and you can feel how constricted a driver would be. 
The little Yamaha engine sounds tinny, but it also sounds like it's ready to wind out a bit for some fun. I can already feel the bumps of the road through the wheel, and as I turn the wheel, I'm feeling a good amount of force feedback letting me know how much grip the tires have. Getting it up to speed, I can really get a good look at the graphics again. Things look amazingly realistic, and I can now start to see the advantages of laser scanning. The track has some great dimension to them. The distance between objects and the view from one side of the track to another give an incredible sensation. This also plays well into speed sensation as getting going up to full speed, there's a nice combination of clarity and blur to match your speed. Now that the tires are warmed up, I can start to push the car a bit. Driving these little legends turns out to be a total blast. You will find yourself crossed up or counter steering out of the corners. The cars have plenty of grip and can actually get going pretty fast. I can see the kind of crazy racing they will lead to once we start racing the world. But before we do that, let's switch gears to road racing. We'll remember that the basic membership came with the Legends as well as the Solstice. So if we switch to the Solstice, we would now have three tracks to choose from. Lime Rock, Summit Point, and one of my all-time favorite tracks, Mazda Raceway, aka Laguna Seca. So since it's my favorite, I'm going to start off road racing with Laguna. Revving up the car, you can hear there isn't a lot behind this little sports car. So we gas it up and go. The car has a little more pep than I thought it would, and again, instantly my wheel comes to life. Running down into the dirt a bit on the pit exit, I get my first warning message telling me that I've driven off-road and would be given a penalty against my rankings. I'm in practice mode right now, so that won't count, but it gives you a guideline as to how strict the rules are here. We'll come back to the points later. Right now, let's just stick to the driving. The Solstice is a very nimble car, and it drives very much like I would expect a car of its caliber to handle. Between the handling and the feel of the wheel, it's hard to look around, but when I do, I'm looking at the most realistic version of Laguna that I have ever seen. Every inch of this place has been mapped, and once again, the laser scanning is noticeable immediately. At first, I thought what I was seeing was a graphical change, but it really seems to come back to the laser scanning. There's something very different about the dimensions and depth that I am seeing. The Solstice sounds are a bit weak, which matches the car as far as power goes. It handles like a dream, but it is short on power. I think this is exactly what iRacing wants out of its beginner cars. It will make for some great training and great competition, allowing people to grow into finer cars. So that is just a taste of the driving and test mode. Other things to pay attention to here are in the upper right side of the menu. You have the setup tab where you can make various changes to the car depending on what that class of car allows. Depending on what level you're at or what car you're in, you're gonna have different setup options available. In addition to that, we have an options tab where you can adjust game settings. We're gonna take a quick break and when we return, we're gonna get down to some racing. Hi, this is Townsend Bell. I drive the number 99 William Rath car. We're at the Indy 500 and you're watching SRT. This would now put us to racing. When you click on the race tab, it shows you the upper area what series and car you are currently selected for. I have it now set to the Pontiac, but the way to change it is to go back to the series tab. And as a beginner, I will select the Legends car. It now shows me that the current race week is at South Boston. On the left, you can see the practice servers that are getting ready to start up every two minutes apart all day and night. The next column is qualifying. The way iRacing works is that the series will run one track a week. I can qualify as many times as I would like, but whatever the best time that I post will be my qualifying time for that week. The third column is time trial, where it will be you against the clock. You will run consecutive incident-free laps to post a time, and the number of laps will vary depending on the length of the track. At the end, your time will be ranked against other drivers and points will be awarded accordingly. Then lastly is the race mode. At every other hour, there will be another race. Any and all drivers eligible for each class of racing will be able to join any of these races. Your qualifying time for that week will earn you grid spots for that race. After joining the room, there will be a short warm-up period followed by the race. After the race is over, you will get a standings page showing you where you placed and all points and penalties earned. iRacing has many other features to it. I mentioned the chat tab, but in addition to that, iRacing has built-in voice chat. 
This is great when running with friends online or for a little pre-race or after-race chatter. The other thing that just blows me away is the stats. Everything you do is recorded and tracked, and the entire world is also being recorded and tracked. You can see who the best of the best are each and every week in racing and time trialing. You can look up drivers and see how they performed in the past. There is an endless amount of data, and it's all there for the whole world to see. The paint shop for iRacing is also very interesting. There is something nice about being able to paint cars with nothing more than a click of a mouse. You can change schemes and colors. There is a limited amount of paint jobs available, and having something truly unique isn't possible as of now. Something else that makes iRacing special is the ranking and penalty points. If you are qualifying, time trialing, or racing, then you are accountable for your actions. Drive off the track, hit an object or another car, or spin your car out and you will be hit with incident points. For those of you who remember the days of laps per incident or LPI, this will sound familiar, but it is now taking it to a whole new level. On the other hand, as you finish races or time trials, you will be awarded points based on your finishing position. It also knows your ranking versus the people that you are racing against, so it will award more or less points based on the competition. It is with these points that we will advance in levels gaining access to more tracks, more cars, and higher levels of competition. The whole thing is designed to keep you at a level of a car that suits your ability and place you in competition of similar levels, just like in real life. There are many other features to the sim, but the last one I want to finish with is a very big deal, and that is just the overall interface. iRacing appears to be the easiest sim to work with that I have ever seen. There is almost no file management to deal with. Just fire up your web browser and iRacing does the rest. You do not have to be a computer expert to drive iRacing. Now I want to focus our attention back to your iRacing career. I also mentioned that iRacing was a pay-to-play sim. Well, with that basic subscription, you will have enough to keep you busy for a while. It could actually take you several months to even get to a level above either of these cars depending on your ability and how often you drive. At the beginner level, the same goes for tracks. It will be a while till the levels that you are racing will go beyond the ones that are included in the basic packet. At some point, whether it be just for practice sessions or because you have achieved a rank that allows for more need, there are plenty of cars and tracks that will be needed in a progression of time. So for example, if I should graduate from Rookie Solstice to the Advanced Rookie, then I would be eligible for the Skip Barber car. And the basic package doesn't include that car. I will have to pay for that car in order to compete at that level. iRacing charges you for this. As of now, it looks like additional cars will cost you $15. As I mentioned earlier, depending on the package you bought, you may already have enough credits to purchase a few items. As you climb the ladder in either road or oval racing, or hopefully both, you may also find that you will eventually need new tracks. The tracks range in price from $15 to $25, it seems, depending on size and detail. Once you buy an add-on to the sim, it is yours forever. You will not need to ever purchase them again. But iRacing does plan on adding more cars and tracks so you can start saving your money now. The cars that are currently available are the Formula Mazda, the RT2000 Skip Barber car, the Late Model, the Radical SR8, and the SK Modified. All of these cars have very detailed graphics and sounds and there is already a pretty good selection of tracks available as well. They include Atlanta, Concord, Daytona, Homestead, Infineon, Stafford, Martinsville, Virginia, USA International, Irwindale, Silverstone, Road America, and Richmond. Many of the tracks have multiple layouts, including the road course for most of the ovals, as well as the mini oval on the front stretch of Lowe's. I can think of a bunch of great looking tracks in sim racing, and anyone who takes a look at iRacing will be blown away. Again, the laser scanning gives new dimension to all of these tracks. I will say as I got into the higher horsepower cars in iRacing, that everything about the sim became even better. I am still climbing my way up the rank, so I have not even been able to race against anyone in most of the cars. I am patiently working my way up the ladder as I would in real life. In real life, if you wanted to start a career in motorsports, you would start off small. You might start off in go-karts or maybe one of the less expensive local SCCA classes. And at that level, it is usually done on a very small selection of tracks, or maybe only one, your local track. This is very much how your iRacing career will begin. Starting with smaller cars with less horsepower and running them on a small selection of tracks to cut your teeth on. 
Your goal very much the same as in real life, to move up the ranks to bigger cars, more selection of tracks, and rates against higher levels of competition. Despite the title beta, iRacing is a very complete sim. They have also gone a different direction than other sim companies have ever attempted. This is a bold move and will leave the big question. Is sim racing ready for iRacing? For those looking to get the newest Ferrari the day after it hit a showroom or racetrack, iRacing will not fulfill that need. And there are still some unanswered questions, like what tracks, what cars are coming, what about leagues, individual paint jobs, and many more. However, for those looking for very controlled competition in a format that truly does its best to recreate the path of a real-life racer, iRacing might be the answer. Honestly, I can see that if it catches on, it allows for a form of competition that sim racing has needed since its beginning. It will depend on a few things to happen for it to really accomplish that goal. It will require enough community to offer full grid races all of the time. It will also require that people have the desire to start off small and work their way through the ranks. But if iRacing does accomplish those goals, then look out world, iRacing is almost here.